on this Father's Day, I'd like to call your attention to Psalms 1, and then I'd like to read in your hearing from the first three verses with the emphasis being upon verse 1. The psalmist says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Amen. Notice the first four words of verse 1. Blessed is the man. Blessed is the man. This being Father's Day, I like to use by way of subject these words, the Father who is truly blessed. Amen. The Father who is truly blessed. Amen. What do I mean by the word blessed? I believe there are better translations of the word blessed, such as happy or fortunate, used to describe the blessed man. But these words don't promise laughter, pleasure, or earthly prosperity, which is what the world calls being blessed. Have the Father who is truly blessed, joy, hope, peace, and contentment is independent of outward circumstances. Instead, his happiness comes from following Jesus Christ, no matter what the cost. Therefore, happy is the Father who makes it his daily practice to obey God. He can be used mightily of God, even when God's blessings don't come immediately. Yet he is faithful to do what God says in his word. Happy is the Father who has totally surrendered his life to Jesus Christ because he knows obedience to God is the key to abundant blessings. When you first of all give your life to Jesus Christ, he gives you blessings untold, not just blessings as gifts to be enjoyed, but blessings that overflow to others as well. In other words, his children, his grandchildren, and his great-grandchildren too. That is, blessings of God's favor and protection and that God would be pleased with their life and that God would be merciful and compassionate toward them and that God would give his approval and most of all, his peace. Because the Father who is truly blessed know when he asks God to bless himself and others too, it demonstrates love and it encourages others. And it also provides a model of caring for others because the blessings we receive remind us of God's goodness and provisions. They also encourage us to continue to serve God faithfully because God is faithful. And he often blesses us in ways we do not expect, especially when we remain faithful to his word in a changing world. In other words, happy, blessed, fortunate is the father who is in the world, but quite unaffected by the world because of his devotion to Jesus Christ. Therefore, he knows the blessings of God shall rest upon the Father who trusts in God and does not throw his lot with the wicked, but wisely avoid the company and companionship of the wicked, that is, evildoers. In other words, the low and vulgar. The Father who is truly blessed understands what it means to be blessed. The Father who is truly blessed knows what it means to be happy, uh -huh. what it means to be fortunate. Well, so he is careful in the steps he takes and moves he makes, and he stays away from any ungodly relationship that will cause his faith in God to waver. Amen. Since he knows someone is watching him, uh -huh. 
They're also imitating and emulating every act, every move, and every word he does and says. That's why the father who is truly blessed is watchful how he lives. Lest he blots the way of a lost sinner. Or take up with those who show a negative opinion in a disrespectful way. Of, of what, at what God considers important. In other words, he walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor stand it in the way of sinners, uh -huh. nor sit it in the seat of the scornful. Yeah. Instead, he put his trust in the Lord uh -huh. and concentrates on God's words and ways. Well. In fact, he is compared to a fruitful tree. Yeah. Uh -huh. One reason is because he is not guided by the world's standards. Amen. Because the world will tell you to be happy, you have to have riches. Uh -huh power, positions, and prestige. But the Father who is truly blessed will tell you that's not true. Because riches do not guarantee happiness. And without God, all is vain. Only Jesus Christ can give you true happiness. That is, only Jesus Christ can give you the knowledge that your soul is saved, safe and secure and anchored in him, Amen. the savior of the world, the source of all true blessings. Uh -huh. Henceforth, there is something particular about the character and righteous behavior and the fruitful life of the father who is truly blessed, uh -huh. which makes him stand out in a positive manner well. amongst other men. Well. I say that because in verses one through three of Psalms one, Notice, he travels on the road of the faithful. Amen. Did y'all get that? Uh -huh. He travels on the road of the faithful. In other words, God's way of obedience. Instead of traveling down the road of the faithless or the road of the rebellious and the road of the destructive, his life becoming Christ. Because in contrast to the ungodly, described in verse 4 and following, who continue to act against God's word through self-will ways and leaving God out of their plans and then coming up with their own cunning and wicked devices, which are the wrong paths to take, the Father who is truly blessed, his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night because of his reverence of God's truth and his obedience to follow God's command, mainly because he knows the voice of God from the voices of the world. I believe that's worth saying to you again. The Father who is truly blessed knows the voice of God from the voices of the world. That's the reason why you need to watch those folks who always talk about the Spirit has spoken to me. There's only one Holy Spirit, but there are many false spirits in the world called the Antichrist. There are many who oppose, they are against, and try to counterfeit the voice of God. But the Father who is truly blessed knows the voice of God from the voices of the world. Amen. So he's careful about who he listened to, uh -huh. where he hangs out, and whom he associate with. Can I say that again? Amen. He's careful about who he listened to and where he hangs out. Well. He even goes as far as to disassociate himself from people, places, and things which oppose God, uh -huh. especially since our family and friends uh -huh can have a profound influence on us in ways that we may never or may n not think. Uh -huh. Sometimes you don't realize how people are affecting you because there are three things that affect a person. Uh -huh. Their environment, right. their heredity, uh -huh. and their will. Uh -huh. And the strongest of these three is the will. Uh -huh. 
Because you can live in the slums and not become slummy. You can come from a family where everybody in the family has a weak gene to certain addictions in which it only takes for some one drink, one puff or something in order for you to become addicted to alcohol and drugs. But just because your daddy was a jick don't mean you have to be a jick too. In fact, it ought to be the determination to say that I'm going to remain a, a child of God who stay faithful uh -huh. to the word of God. Amen. That is, I'm going to honor God in marriage. Uh -huh. I'm going to honor him as a father. Well, and I'm going to honor him in my service to the Lord. Amen. Because somebody have to break this evil cycle. Uh -huh. That people in my family, I can't remember the last person who got married and stayed married. Right. Come on, talk to me. Right. Better than y'all saying amen, amen right now. Next of all, that's why you ought to observe the Father uh -huh. who has truly blessed deliberate actions because unlike the ungodly sinner who goes from walking beside to standing with well. and then end up sitting beside the seat of the scornful, uh -huh. he learned to choose friends well. who build up his faith uh -huh. and draw him to God. Not friends who say, say, man, what's going on with you today? You know, we're going to stay at home and watch the game. I got some meat cooking on the grill. He tell his friends, wait till church is over. And then I'll get with you later. He choose friends who will build up his faith and draw him to God instead of friends who tear his faith down and drive him away from the Lord. In other words, God-fearing friends who believe in advancing the kingdom of God and letting their light so shine for Jesus Christ rather than choosing friends uh -huh. which embrace sin and spiritually regress and deter from their intended purpose of God's design for their life. Well, In other words, he stays away from so-called friends uh -huh. who mock God instead of seeking to understand him through the truth uh -huh. of his word. Because he know people like that separate him from the radiance of God's joyful presence. Uh -huh. Just as a dark cloud separates us from the joyful presence of the morning sun. Well, and if you're not quite getting me, let me go and break it down to you. Uh -huh. Where the rubber meets the road. Well, Birds of a feather yeah. flock together. Uh -huh. So you need to watch the company you keep. Uh -huh. Because bad company corrupt good morals. One bad apple in the barrel, it ruins the whole barrel. In other words, notice verse 2 of Psalms 1. Show us the word of God is the hallmark of the Father who is truly blessed. It's the hallmark of his faith and practice. Because in order to know the word, in order to teach it and do it, and then apply it to his life and share it with others. Then in his law uh -huh. doth he meditate day and night. Amen. Because he readily believes and confess, I'm not the perfect father. Uh -huh. And by the way, let me say, there is no perfect father. Yeah. He readily confess and believe, I'm not the perfect father. Uh -huh. And there are several areas in my life. Well, that I should be asking God where I should change my thoughts, uh -huh. direction, well. behavior, and beliefs. Well. Because I want to live a life that is pleasing to God as a man, yeah. man, man. as a father, well. and as a husband. In other words, God make me the kind of Christian man you can use uh -huh. for your glory. Uh -huh. Because the father who is truly blessed, highest goal is to walk worthy of the vocation. He has been called because he understands, he knows he represent God in the home first. And then he represent God in marriage second. And then last of all, he represent God in parenting. And this is extremely important for us to see how the father represent God first in the home. And how the father represent God second in marriage. And then third, how the father represent God in parenting. I say that because often the role of husband 
and father is not viewed as a nurturing role today, but merely a functional one. Because many fathers, they have come together in conceiving a child. And anybody can make a baby. But it takes a man to raise that child. And sadly, this has caused many families to suffer because either the man has neglected his duties or abandoned his responsibilities to his children or to his wife and children. And notice I put wife and children first because that was God's order. Before you got children, you should get a wife. But thank God there are still husbands and fathers who are good examples of Christian living as important role models for young men who need to see how it's done and imitate it more than hear how it's done because actions speak louder than words. In other words, the father who is truly blessed. Know if I want someone to act a certain way, be sure that you live that way yourself. Amen. You know how often how somebody, you've heard them speak to someone and their rebuke or their rebuttal to the words, how can you tell me? Uh -huh. Look what you're doing. Yeah. You ain't no better. Uh -huh. Come on, say amen. amen. <laughs> amen. I'm trying to get through the text. Uh -huh. But y'all too busy looking at me. Like impress me as if you can. I'm not trying to impress you. I'm just telling you what the word of God has to say. See, the father who is truly blessed, know if I want someone to act a certain way, be sure that I live that way myself. Then you will earn the right to be heard. And obviously the first step toward helping children live right is for parents to live right themselves. Amen. Because your actions are often copied by those closest to you. Uh -huh. And Father, you help shape the world's future well. by the way you shape your child's values. Uh -huh. So ask yourself, what kind of example am I setting before my children? Uh -huh. Am I passing on family blessings or generation curses? Well. In other words, what are you handing over? Your bad habits or the proper godly practice of meditating upon God's word daily. In fact, let me speak from this verse from personal experience. Because on, the Bible says his delight is in the law of the Lord. I can speak from personal experience from this verse because first of all from my grandfather who's been called home to glory by the name of J.D. Harrison. See, when I was a child, he kept me and read daily from small gospel tracts given to him from my mother and father. Uh -huh. And many of those scriptures I still remember. See, Pawpaw, which is what I called him, Pawpaw had a sickness. And his sickness was he had a brain tumor that had to be removed, uh -huh. thereby leaving him partially blind and taking sight out of one uh, eye and causing him to be deaf in one ear. Pawpaw wasn't a very strong man in his older years because of what sickness had done to his body. Yet Pawpaw always read to me, not from Dr. Seuss, but Pawpaw read to me from the Bible and he made sure I understood Genesis through the last book of the Old Testament, Malachi. Uh -huh. He made sure that before I went to school, I knew how to read. I knew how to write. And see, Papa, he didn't graduate from high school, but Papa played dominoes with me. And he taught me how to add and subtract. And he made sure before I went up to that school that I knew how to act and conduct myself. He'd never have had to tell me to pull up my pants. Uh -huh. I already knew not to let my behind hang all out because Popo used the time he had with his grandson to teach him quality things. But neither in my lifetime have I ever known a period when my own father has not read the Bible himself and shared the scriptures with his wife and children and told us how to live by the word of God, if we want to be blessed. 
See, all these memories put me in mind of the Lord speaking to Moses in Exodus 10. In verse 1 and 2 saying, Tell in the ears of thy son and of thy son's son what things I wrought in Egypt and my signs which I have done among them that ye may know how that I am the Lord because Moses witnessed events few people would ever see. See, Paul, Paul, he went through a generation of time that I never have experienced or seen in my life. And then my father himself experienced certain hardships that I have never had to endure. That's why God told Moses that his miraculous experiences with Pharaoh should be retold to his descendants because it is important to tell our children about God's work in our past and to help them see what God is doing right now. Amen. In other words, the Bible ought to help you see and tell what are the turning points in your life where God intervened uh -huh. and what God is doing for you now. See, somebody here need to tell the real story. Uh -huh. You ain't always been in church Amen. on a Sunday morning. Uh -huh. And then when you came to church, you didn't always come to mind to worship the Lord. Yeah. Same, some of you came to church looking to hook up with somebody. Somebody else came to church, and when you came to church, you remember how you had just come from the club? Still had that liquor on your breath? You know what you were really doing? You couldn't wait till you got out of church to go back home and go to the park and do God only knows what. So you need to tell the, your child, tell your grandchild, you know what really happened? I used to play church. That is until one day I was running because they were shooting and I said, Lord, if you ever get me out of here, I promise you, I will serve the Lord. Because somebody right now who I'm preaching to, you've been chased by another man. Or you were dating another woman who was married to someone. And that man chased you in the church. Oh, come on, Daddy. Talk to me now. Father, the stories you share will lay the foundation of your children's belief in God of how he has forgiven you, saved you, answered your prayers, and supplied your needs. So you ought to keep telling the stories because it will help keep memories of God's faithfulness alive in your family. Somebody remember how you grew up. And there's a song that says, I come from a poor family. Uh -huh. We didn't have much, uh -huh. but the Lord yeah. has been good to me. Yeah. It will remind your family uh -huh. how good God has been to you. Yeah. Because some of you have parents, uh -huh. grandparents, that never even graduated from high school. Yeah. Some didn't even get out of middle school or elementary. Uh -huh. But look how good God has been to you. Because right now you are blessed to be the one in college. You may be the one who is now able to have a job that's paying you above five figures, a three-figure salary. So you ought to keep the faithfulness alive in your family of how good God has been to you by observing the truth taught in the scriptures and a mature reflection upon its place in your life. Uh -huh. This practice is the basis of spiritual growth and true progress in practical godliness. Uh -huh. Because you can also learn how to trust, obey, and follow God by meditating on his word. Truly the Bible is a thrilling book uh -huh. and one of God's greatest resources showing the importance of the family. Uh -huh. Because the family provides its place of acceptance, a place of encouragement, uh -huh. a place of exhortation, and a place of counsel. Well. That's why the father who is truly blessed won't cut himself off uh -huh. from his family. Oh, yeah. Neither will he suggest to anyone else uh -huh. to reject one's family. Yeah. Can I say it to you again? Well. Because some of us come from a bad family. Uh -huh. Some people in y'all family, y'all know y'all family can cuss. 
Every other word you heard was a curse word. Yes. Somebody else come from a family. Yes. That in your family you were so ashamed because you didn't know what mama was going to say and do when she came to school. Yes. She didn't come up there in her best Sunday dress. Yes. She came up to that school in her work uniform. Yes. And when she spoke, she never used uh -huh. a complete sentence. Yes. Always run on sentences, splitting yes. verbs and everything else. Yes. And you didn't know good English until you got to school. Uh -huh. That's the reason why right now I have such a hard time uh -huh. with preaching without notes because I'll split a verb in a minute. Yeah. I'll use a run-on sentence and it doesn't make me none yeah. because I know who Jesus is. Yeah. That's what's most important. I'm not ashamed uh -huh. of my family. I'm not ashamed yeah. of the struggles we have had to make. I'm not ashamed yeah. of where we live. I'm not ashamed. Yeah. Of the clothes I had. I'm not ashamed of the car we drove in. I'm not ashamed of the type of church we attended. So don't be the type of father who cuts yourself off from your family because your boy got you mad. Because your wife wouldn't listen to you. You got mad and you left your family. That's not the way of God. Don't even encourage anyone else to do the same. Amen. See, somebody ought to be old enough and wise enough to say, you know what? Well, as well as I uh, or hate, as much as rather I hate to admit it, uh -huh. when I look back over, I would have been much further alone well, in life had I only understood yes. what I understand now yes. about marriage, uh -huh. about uh, being a father, yes. about being a husband. Uh -huh. And I would not have been so hot-headed. I would not have been so temperamental. I would have been more forgiving and more faithful and dutiful had I only knew what I know now. That's the reason why the father who is truly blessed won't cut himself off neither will he suggest to anyone else to reject one's family whether through anger or through exaggerated desire for independence like the prodigal son in Luke 15 did. Uh -huh. Because rejecting one's family is foolish because you cut yourself off from all they provide. Amen. Father, next of all, if your family is divided, uh -huh. if your marriage ended in divorce, if you are right now separated from your wife, if your family is divided, if y'all are still together, uh -huh. but yet you can't speak to one another, you have not been around one another in weeks and you barely pick up the phone and call one another. And I'm not just talking about your wife and children. Uh -huh. You may be father, you may be the example. You got brothers and sisters out there in the world. Uh -huh. And you know that when I'm talking about blended family, that's the word they use now. Uh -huh. But let me go and break it down to you well, where the rubber meet the road. Yeah. Blended family means you got a half brother, half sister. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, no daddy have half children. Yeah. All he has is sons uh -huh. and daughters. Yeah. Don't you get in that foolishness about that one my mama child. Uh -huh. That one my daddy child. Those are your brothers yeah. and your sisters. Yeah. So if your family is divided, yeah. do it no further harm by showing favoritism. Uh -huh. Because favoritism only adds fear yeah. to the fire of an already strained relationship. Yeah. Especially when the jilted person who they feel that I am the one always overlooked, uh -huh. unappreciated, or unacknowledged can't see you are doing your very best yeah. to avoid being impartial to anyone. Uh -huh. Fathers, I realize that sometimes you may not be able to change the mind. And the feelings toward of our, of, of your, our youth. Uh -huh. You may not be able to change the mind and the feelings of that child. Yeah. Because most of the time they only hear one side of the story. Amen. Most of the time they don't realize that you've been paying your child support. Uh -huh. yeah. You've been trying to do all your visitations. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is that man and that woman couldn't get together. Amen. They couldn't get along. So now they allow money. Uh -huh. They allow personality. They allowed their own pride to come between them. And then they let a court who don't know either one of y'all try to work it out. Instead of trusting God and believing you. And now the only person hurt is the child. 
So if your child has been hurt, don't do it any further harm by not t taking the time to show I'm not trying to be impartial because sometimes that child just don't know. Amen. And you have to be wise enough, mature enough. You have to be spiritual enough to be patient and be prayerful and say, I'm not going to talk about your parents. I'm not going to talk about your other brothers and sisters. I'm just going to pray and I'm going to do what's right. I'm going to be the best example of being a parent to you that I can. Because if you continue to strive for healing, if you continue to strive for better and open communication and deeper understanding, God will reward your faith in him.